illnesses in the mind. Sometimes we want something that we don't really need, we feel greed. Sometimes we're angry, we feel hatred. Sometimes we are confused about the nature of reality and we feel delusion or we, we think in terms of delusion. So when we look at the way our mind works, we can find a universal ethics. And uh, when we act on good qualities, which are the opposite of the defilements which I just mentioned, like if you are, act out of wisdom, act out of uh, compassion, act out of um, generosity, these are all examples of qualities that help to develop the wholesome roots or the good roots in our mind and character. And they are the opposites of the defilements. But in Buddhism, we always start looking at ethics from these three things, greed, hatred, and delusion, and how to deal with them. Now, when we are dealing with our mind and moving toward improving ourselves, whether it's uh, about being a, just a good person or actually developing ourselves toward the path of enlightenment, which is the highest goal in Buddhism, then we need to develop uh, morality. We need to develop a good state of mind, a stable mind, good character. We also need to develop wisdom. Now that's where we are talking about in this series of talks. Um, if you can call it a talk, maybe it's more like an online discussion or something, but let's just call it a talk for now. And uh, one of the things, uh, the most important thing of wisdom, according to the Buddhist practice is right view. So in terms of Buddhist practice, developing wisdom starts with developing right view, developing right thought. Now when you talk, when we focus on right view, you can compare it with, with the soil, which, has be, which becomes better if you start to plant good plants in it. If you, if you have bad plants and you have a lot of uh, bad plants, the soil also becomes bad. But if you have plant a lot of good plants, then also the soil will improve. The same way if we, if we plant the right seeds of understanding into our mind, then our mind as a whole will improve. You can also compare it with the dawning of a new day. So just like the first beams of sunlight, and they, will <laughs> pass, they will maybe come to our face or come to our room, then we know that the dawn has come. Uh, I don't know about America, but in, in Europe, this time can be very different. Like in this period, it's, it's getting earlier. Uh, but um, the dawning of a new day uh, is always starts with the beams of light. And those first beams of light, those, the Buddha, he compared those with right view. If we have right view, then every, every other good aspect of the spiritual and ethical path of life will develop as long as we have a right view. So right view, to explain what it is, you can best compare it to moral reasoning, or you can start by comparing it with moral reasoning in psychology. So in psychology, there's a concept of moral reasoning that if we, uh, if we develop certain qualities, then our reasoning, moral reasoning will improve. This is used in education and in psychology in general. So there is a concepts like moral sensitivity, the, the ability to see an ethical dilemma or problem and including how your actions will affect others. Moral judgment, moral motivation to morally commit ourselves to a good to doing good and avoiding wrong. And that's what we're going to talk about today as well. And moral character, which is the persistence in doing that. All of these are actually connect very well with the Buddhist concept of right view. But I think personally that right view in Buddhism is more clearly formulated or more structured than, than the, the scientific concept of moral reasoning. So right view, is the way we look at life and is the, the perspective that helps us to develop, uh, to understand the principles in life, to lead your life 
happily. And we will also see that there are another six forms of right view, which I have not copied here, which deal with our, the nature of life in the world. So basically right view is our perspective and our knowledge and understanding of how our life works and how the world works around us. Now, as I mentioned before, the, this is not like a sort of a, a Sunday school of Buddhism in which I will tell you what to believe uh, because it's not that simple. Right view explains certain ways of looking at the world that will help you feel encouraged to do good and feel ashamed to do wrong. So it is a way of thinking about the world and the moral reasoning. And then some of these principles, we are very, uh, very easy to think of. It's not something that you wouldn't think of it, but some of these principles may be quite alien to the way of thinking in the West. So last time we talked about uh, giving. This is the most basic form of right view. If we do not believe in giving and how important it is to give and to be generous toward each other, then it's very hard to develop any other good right view. Uh, so uh, just to come back for those who were not there last time, right in the word right view, right does not mean uh, right as in morally right. It could mean that, but it's more than that. Right means everything that helps us to go further on the path to spiritual perfection, or in other words, enlightenment. So the word right is the same word that we use in the mantra Samma Alarang. So the right state of mind or the right way to enlightenment. So giving, there is giving is the first form of right view, which basically says that giving really reaps fruits. So when we, when we, um, when we really believe in giving, then we have this form of right view. And I'm not saying that each of these categories or each of these views, you need, you should use it to judge yourself or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that when we learn about this, we, we study it carefully, then we might be more encouraged to do good and it will help us. Giving makes the world go around. So giving is really important. Giving is what helps a family stay together. If you're between a husband and wife or between two people who live together, you don't have any form of giving generosity that is very difficult to live together. So in Holland these days, uh, it's, it's, it's very common, more and more common for people who marry or are married to, to have their own personal budgets, which I understand is also a natural effect, people both having a job and all that. But uh, there is a disadvantage to, if you all have your own personal budget and you don't share anything, then, then you start to develop the habit of not being able to share. This is an example. If we are in the habit of sharing and, and, and uh, taking, um, sharing things with others, then uh, if you, that is one of the reasons why Thai, why people like Thai people so much because Thai people like to share and be generous. Mm -hmm. This is really uh, uh, something very fundamental to Thai society. So giving helps to solve many problems. It helps us to take care of many things and it helps us to live together in harmony. Most people, they don't have any problem with this first belief. I think, I would say most people, but maybe, well, at least many people believe that giving is something important. I think it's a very fundamental view with even criminals or some people who are not considered very good people in general in society, they might believe that giving is a good thing. But when we progress through these different forms of right view, we will notice that some of these are not shared by many people. The second one is there is sacrifice, which means that to really help another really helps, uh, really reaps fruits to help another person. This is not about uh, helping uh, any person who you know, but it's, 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 also, uh, it's also about helping somebody in need. 
who you might not know. And it presumes that we are all dependent on each other. If we don't help each other out, we will eventually have to accept the consequence. If you don't help the other person who's a stranger, then the, pers the problems of that person might one day come back to you. So the other day I gave the example of the drug person who sells drugs and therefore causes a lot of problems in, uh, in a neighborhood. And as soon as we start to think, well, that's your problem, that's my problem, and we do not try to solve it together, then we are not developing this form of right view. So according to this form of right view, there is sacrifice. We all have certain problems that we need to solve together. And um, um, so the belief there is sacrifice also involves the belief that it's good to give to charity, is good to help those in need. So this is a little less widespread. Many people believe, for example, that it's not a good thing to give to a beggar because he will only use it to buy alcohol, which is partly true, but not entirely. And in, in, in fact, that is sometimes an excuse because we could also be giving bread to a beggar or a piece of food. In other words, there are different ways we can find ways to be generous to others, even those we do not know. Do not know. Um, it also uh, is a general belief that we can help, that we should help, and it's good to help those in need in general, which might be our relatives that we are less familiar with, or it might be uh, 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 people or yeah, in, in general, a good cause. Then the third one we haven't talked about yet, or not much, that is. The third right view is there is offering. And in the context of Buddhism, that means there is respect, there is honor. To honor people really reaps fruits. And this basically presumes that, um, uh, this basically says that, that it's good to have somebody who's worthy of honor to honor that person and we will grow as a result. People who believe the opposite might say that we are all equal. It's not necessary to raise somebody uh, on, or try to make somebody more than what he is and that we shouldn't treat anyone special. This is not to say that somebody who believes that is necessarily evil, but it's just the opposite of this view. And it doesn't help us to do good. In my feeling, uh, my, my experience, in the United States, there are generally more people who believe in this, that it's important to honor and respect than in Europe. We tend to be more egalitarian in Europe. And egalitarianism can come with good benefits like less corruption and all that, but uh, is also the danger that we do not have any clear examples, clear heroes, which we honor and respect. I'm not saying that the United States is perfect in any way, but in, <laughs> in that way, I think the United States can be an example in some elements, some elements. <clears throat> on the other hand, I think in, uh, in Europe, what we are good at is charity and helping each other out. I think that's, that that thing is very good in Europe. So every country may have its good things, but don't worry too much about the countries. Let's take care of ourselves or personally. So you can ask yourself, do you really believe in this? And when I talk about uh, there is offering, I'm not talking about that is necessary to bow like a Thai person does or like a Buddhist person does. But I'm saying there are different ways to pay respect to somebody. And the belief that there is offering is believing that it's good to sometimes express your respect to somebody who's worthy of respect, which might be people like your parents, your teachers, or they might be your local religious uh, people who are your religious clergy. Uh, could be Buddhist monks, could also be uh, Christian ministers. If they, these people are good and example for society, then you, we believe that it's, it's important to announce that to the world, let the world know and to express it openly. Of course, everybody is human, everybody makes mistakes. But when we 
honor somebody, what happens is that, first of all, we help to encourage the other person to do good. And this not only holds for people who we respect much like clergy or uh, religious people, but it also holds in general for anyone who does good. If we, we encourage the people, if we motivate other people to do good, if somebody comes to you uh, and he, he rang, rings the bell on your house and he, has a, he asks for money for a good cause, and then uh, you, you start to scold or you, 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 you uh, chase away that person, you know, it's not helping the person to do good. Or if somebody, some of you might have experienced that if you start to, if you tell some people that you're meditating, that they might make fun of that or they might not understand it, right? Is that correct? <laughs> or is anyone in your surroundings completely understand something like, like meditation? Always. Some do, some don't. Some people don't, right? The same in, in Holland, same everywhere. Uh, even in Thailand, some people don't understand why you would go to a temple or meditate. It's less, but it's still there. So the belief in, in, um, in when we see somebody do something good, we'd like to encourage the other person. That is also included here. It doesn't always mean that we need to bow or something. It is general belief that it's good to encourage and give credit where credit is due. And that not only helps to encourage other people, but it also helps yourself, perhaps more importantly. Because when we encourage other people or give credit where credit is due, then we also will be able to have an example. It's, it's like when we have somebody who does a lot of good in life, and we often think about that person, then we will be more motivated to grow in the example of that person. For me, that is uh, um, um, our abbot in Thailand and our deputy abbot and also the, uh, the Buddha. But the Buddha, of course, is a historical person who lived many long time ago. And if we do not have uh, an example person in the present day and age, then it's sometimes difficult to believe that what the Buddha taught and lived really uh, was true because we have not have a, a modern day example of it. But because we do have, we, well, at least I believe that I do have an example of uh, such a person in, in Lompada Machayo, in Lompada Tatibo, and in Kunyai, then uh, we have an example and we feel encouraged to practice. And uh, many customs which we do in, uh, in, in Buddhism actually help us to develop this quality. So there's different aspects to respect. This is, uh, um, um, these are different forms or different aspects of respect, okay? Some of these we know also in the West, some we don't. Or perhaps we did, we used to know them, but they've become less, uh, they have become less noticeable or less, uh, we have become less familiar with them. So the first one, the first aspect I should start with is to show respect. And the second one is to know respect. And in the West, we tend to emphasize the second one, no respect. And in the, in the East, people tend to emphasize showing respect more than knowing it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's both not perfect. <laughs> those sakura, it, is that a uh, Sanskrit? <laughs> uh, this is all. This is all ancient Indian language. It's Pali language. It's very familiar. It's very similar to Sanskrit, and it's closely related to it. So Pali is the language which we use in Southeast Asian Buddhism and in South Asian Buddhism, which involves Sri Lanka and India, and in East Asian Buddhism. Uh, and uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, Sanskrit is used instead, or Chinese. 
Okay, uh, so there's two aspects. And actually, both of them are important. It's just like the cliche uh, husband who really loves his wife but never buys her flowers. It's, 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 it's true love in a way, but it's not expressed. Maybe the wife will at a certain point doubt her husband because it's never expressed. Sometimes it's good to express your respect to more develop it at a deeper level. And also to, to, it will function as a reminder. It's good sometimes to have rituals that help you develop the quality of respect. Now, before we talk more about respect, is respect is not just uh, like you say, I respect your opinion and then you leave it at that and you don't really pay an interest into it. Respect is actually an active quality of wanting to learn from another person. That's why in sometimes uh, in, by our teachers in Thailand, they connect the word respect with the Thai word tranak. And tranak means to be aware or to develop an awareness from somebody's good qualities. This you can find here in the word manana. Manana is to give credit to somebody's goodness. This is one aspect of respect. There is also the, the aspect of devotion. If you are very much respect somebody, you also feel you'd like to really take care of that person, really like to follow and try to practice what he or she teaches. This not, may involve your religious teachers, but it also may involve your parents or your secular teachers. But devotion, of course, we mostly associate with religion. But there's also the things which we show, right? Showing respect. Sakara means to offer. I think that is mostly um, common only in, uh, in uh, Catholic Christianity in the West. But apart from that, to offer something as a sign of respect is not much used in the West anymore. In Asia, it's very important, not only in a temple where we offering, make offerings to the Buddha and sometimes to certain monks, but also uh, in, 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 in schools and even towards one's parents. If you in Thailand, if you stop a car somewhere, if, if, sorry, if you, if you are on a, on a traffic square, and you stop your car, then sometimes people will come to the car to sell these flowers. I don't know if you ever been to Thailand, then you will know about this, right? And this is called uh, these these the jasmine flowers. They are used to uh, to give to our parents or to people who we respect. The fact that they are being sold uh, on the street. Uh, that much, that widely, is only indicative of how important respect is in Thai society up till today. So it's good sometimes, in other words, it's sometimes good to pay respect to people who we feel are worthy of respect by using something materially. And it may be flowers or something else, but uh, like there is also a custom in Thailand to give something to your parents, like sheets uh, uh, used for the bedding or something like that. But it's, generally, there is a lot of good customs of uh, using uh, material things to show respect. We do not have many of such customs in the West, uh, but uh, perhaps we can help, us help each other to develop them. <laughs> um, there is also the aspect of uh, paying respect by physically showing it. This sometimes in English we call obeisance, right? Is that correctly pronounced, obeisance? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, obeisance is also uh, something that helps us to develop respect in a more physical way. So sometimes in Buddhism we say that if you want to develop good qualities, you need to develop them in the three, through the three gates, body, speech, and mind. So if you develop a good quality in that way, it will be very firm. 
So sometimes when you